<clears throat> okay, so it says that I'm um, now live, so uh, what we'll do is we'll start, um, I'm not getting anything here, so yes, it's saying I'm, I'm live, so we'll go on with it as if I'm live, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. So this is um, the second episode of the Photoshop webinar. And what we're going to do today with this, or tonight rather, are quite a few things. We're going to get a few things covered. Photoshop is basically a program for manipulating photos. Yeah, in the old days they would... They would... Um, you know, take it into the lab and they would work with chemicals and try and change this and try and change that. But today, uh, what we are going to do is um, use Photoshop to the full, its full extent. We're going to, um, first of all, recolor some, fo uh, first of all, we're going to work with some chroma cast um, photographs. Everybody has this. They have photographs that have an orange cast over them or a purple cast over them, etc. And um, it's very, very easy in Photoshop to manipulate them and get the, the, the cast off them. Um, the easiest, there is a, I think there's a 40 second delay from the time I'm speaking to the time you see it. But um, what basically... Photoshop is for is for correcting all these uh, color casts and underexposed photographs. We can even use um, uh, a plain background. It can be any color. It can be green. It can be blue. It could be orange. Um, the model or the product in front of it that can't have that color associated to it. That's the only rule for chroma king. But I think we'll start with. Um, um, Uh, the the color cast uh, stuff first and then um, if we get some time we'll colorize a, a photograph I found the George you know from Spare a Copper uh, and we'll try and photo we'll try and fit that in as well but right okay let's get to it okay so we have this photograph on the screen hi everybody we have this photograph on the screen and um, it's got an orange cast over it yeah, and no matter what we tried to do with it, it would mean that uh, the, the the way the photograph was taken, maybe the sun was to the front of them, um, etc. So um, the way we can deal with this is very, very easy in Photoshop. We have actually got three here. We've got another one that was taken away back in the, the 70s or the 60s, I think it was. got a very purplish chroma cast over it. And we have got one here that's got a very orange chroma cast over it. So we're going to attack the three of them in kind of three different but similar ways. So let's go to the first one. The first thing you want to do here is, um, I'll just run a little piece of software. Um, the first thing you want to do here is create a copy of your original photograph. If you've scanned this photograph in, um, you want to create a copy of it. So you're always working on the copy. So to a very quick, this is a very light um, color cast that's over this. So a very quick way to do it is to go up to image um, adjustments and match color. Yeah, doesn't do anything yet. But if you click this um, neutralize button here. Yeah, if you click that. You'll see that the color cast has gone. Yeah, I'll unclick it and I'll click it. But it's put a kind of purplish color cast over it. Yeah. So we can fade some of that purple out. Just like that. Right. We can go down there. It's purple again. And we can come up here and we can fade some of that purple out. Okay. So that's the before and that's the after. You know, and again with these photographs, <clears throat> you would take a stamp 
and explained what a stamp is. It's a collection of all the layers. So this whole layer here is opaque, meaning you can't see through it. Yeah, um, so you would hit Command, Alt, or that uh, Command, Option, Shift, and E. And if you can see here, that's created a stamp here at the top. So I've got two photographs that are the same. And then you would tidy it up by always going into Camera Raw Filter. So anything that you had to do here, like a little bit of exposure, maybe give it a little bit of contrast. Uh, don't don't go too crazy on it. Look at the highlights, okay? Um, if you need to bring the highlights down, have a look at the shadows, see what what's better and what's le less. Uh, um, the whites as well, there's some whites in this, so we want them to be nice and bright. The blacks, yeah, make sure they're, they're dark, but not too dark that you can't see them. And of course, you want to up the clarity of the photograph and you want to include a little bit of, of um, vibrance. So always, always do this to photographs. If there is a purple tinge in it, for instance, you could go to the the third one along, one, two, three, four, the fourth along, what will give you the luminance values for this. And you could say that the purples were a bit strong, so you could tone the purples down a bit. Yeah, you could say that the red flowers, yeah, wanted to be a bit more red, or you could tone them down. You know, they're a bit darker there. And of course, the saturation of things as well. We've looked, worked at the luminance of something, but the saturation of something. So you can make those flowers really bright and intense. Again, with the purples, just tone it down a bit. And here's the hue, same um, saturations that you have, the same color, this, the same color but different tones of it, different hues of that color. And then, of course, I like to finish off with a, a little vignette going all around the photograph like that. And once that's processed, that's what we, that's what we originally had. We color corrected it, yeah, taking the color cast out of it. And then we enhanced it a bit yeah so that's that one that's finished um so let's move on to the next one so we've got someone being married here these are off the net i think it's six i think it's either 60s or 70s anyway going with the floppy hat and the long dress etc you know so 60s or 70s anyway again we're going to take a copy of it yeah i might be moving too fast but you can watch this as many times as you have to um we can take a copy of that, and again, let's see what, we'll sh I'll show you some different things, but let's see what um, Match Color does for us. So if we hit Neutralize, it's given us a green cast, yeah, and we can take some of that green cast out, like that, just a little bit, like that. Another way we can do, that was before. And that's after. Another way we can enhance this is to bring in an adjustment layer. And the adjustment layers are here. Okay. Um, I'll keep it the swatches. I'll use, I'll use it at the bottom so that you can still see me at the top there. And what we do is bring in an adjustment layer. And this layer is going to be levels. Okay. And we're going to, I'm going to try and explain this histogram to you. Right now we're working in RGB, the red, red, green, and the blue values. Yeah, there is no waypoint here, so it's going, it's peaking straight into the colors. Yeah, and it's there's no waypoint at the other side, which means basically it's full of color. This this image, although you can't see it. So we'll attack each color individually. Let's go to the blue channel, and we can see that we can pull the blues and just a little not much let's go to the green channel now if you have a look here it's not straight in there so we know that the lightness of this photograph is missing some of its histogram okay so we can bring that in and correct it yeah and we can m mess around in here you don't want to go too nuts though because um, that will add its own color cast and that would be green 
So if we move into the red color cache, we can see that that's predominantly missing some of the histogram here. Okay, so again, let's move that in there. Okay, not too much. Maybe bring it back just a shade. So that's another technique. Um, we can right click on that and we can merge down. Okay, so we can merge that down on top of it. And there's what we had with its purple reddish color cast. And there's what we've got. And again, back into filter, back into camera raw. And um, let's enhance the whole photograph a little. Not too much exposure. But if you ever give it exposure, give it some contrast as well. Let's have a look at the clarity. We can turn that up a bit. And the vibrance of it. So some of the colours come through. Let's look at the blacks in this. There are some blacks. So we can brighten them up just a little. Let's look at the whites. There's a lot of whites. Yeah, We can tone them down a bit. The shadows of this. Let's enhance the shadows a bit. Look at the highlights. I'm going through this fast because we've got a lot to cover, guys. And that is... That's looking good. Now, another thing we can do before we leave that is we can... It was a poor photograph to begin with, meaning it's a little blurry, etc. We can add a level of um, sharpening to it. Now, you don't want to go too crazy with sharpening. There's a lot of dust in this, and I'll show you how to take that out, but you don't want to go too crazy with sharpening because it can add a lot of artifacting. So if we go to the sharpening tab, we can add a little bit of sharpening with a little bit less radius, but a bit more, and bring out some of the detail. Okay. Um, forget about the noise reduction. We could probably take out some of the noise reduction, just a little, and noise reduction in the color as well. Bring that down color detail I think that would do and then of course <clears throat> we could go in and add our vignette <clears throat> um, just a little vignette and also um, give the luminance values for the reds a tweak just a little there are some yellows in this so tone them down a bit and that would do that. Yeah, that's what we have. That's what we had. Yeah, it's 10 times the photograph. It was shot with uh, film. The film's been scanned in. Hence all the the artifacting here, all the, the dust on it. We could have cleaned that up before we went in. To clean it up, you've seen it from the episode last week where I just went over and used the uh, spot healing brush very small spot healing brush and just went into the photograph hit the Z key I can zoom in as far as I need to hit the space bar and you can move it around and I could go in with this tool and I could literally I'm just dabbing so you would spend some time in here dabbing it you wouldn't go across like that because that will affect the wall behind it yeah so you would just on and off with your mouse button or your tablet if you're using one. By the way, guys, I'm not using a tablet. That will come later. I'll show you how to um, use a tablet. It's so much easier with a tablet. But 90% of you will be using um, a mouse um, or your finger, indeed, if you're using uh, Photoshop for an iPad. And yes, you can get Photoshop for an iPad. doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but um, it's certainly is very functional I use it myself so you could keep going here and you could get rid of all the dust you know and you would work your way through the photograph if it was a if it was a paid commission this was somebody's uh, mother and father you know uh, maybe one of them isn't here anymore or whatever you know and it was a paid commission then you would take your time and you would really go through this you know lights of there you can afford to swipe the brush down. You take your time with it, getting rid of all the little dots.
but um so that's what we had yeah and that's what we've got now and it looks a lot better let's move on to the third one this one needs some special consideration every one of us have one of these photographs either from days gone by or from the a camera where a uh, new digital camera where the the um the white balance hasn't been corrected. There's been fluorescent lights on the walls behind you. And of course, you're shooting with a solar lamp, like um, some, you know, the flash on the camera. And it mixes with the, the fluorescent light at the back. And it gives you this orange cast over the top of it. Well, um, that's great, you know, if you like that type of thing. But I'm just seeing if there's anybody saying anything. I'll just type in, hi guys. And you can talk to me if you've logged into the channel. You can talk to me. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get on with this. So the first thing to do, once again, let's um, make a new layer from it. So we want to know what this orange color is. You know, there are so many variants of it. If we go over and have a look, there's, there's a dark orange, there's a light orange. So we want to know exactly what this uh, color of orange is. This Is it dark? Is it light? Where is it? You know, there could be 16 million of them, you know. So the best way to do this is to go up to filter, blur, and let's average out the blur on the whole photo. That's why we've put it on a new layer. Let's average out the blur on a new on a new on this new layer. So if we hit average, we get this color. Now this color, I don't have a spectrum wheel, but this color, this color of orange has at the other side of the spectrum, it's blue. Yeah, it's going to be some color of blue. So we have this color of orange here that's going to be a color of blue. So we need to invert that. In other words, we need to take it from, if you look at the color wheel, I'll get one next for next week for you. If you look at a color wheel, you'll see orange and directly across from it, you'll see blue. Yeah, it will be some color of blue anyway. So we need to invert this layer, right? We'll just say that this is the, the color layer. Okay, and we're going to invert it. So we do that quite easily by going Image, Adjustments, and Invert, or Command-I, Control if you're using Windows, if you're using a PC. So there, we knew it was going to be blue. We didn't know what, what um, shade of blue or hue of blue, but this is the shade of blue that is going to fix the orange that's in this photograph. So it's very easy because we want to use the color from this palette. So we change the blending mode in, in Photoshop to color. Now it's gave it a, 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 a blue tinge over the whole thing. In fact, it's black and blue, you know. So that's no use. So all we do is we go over to the opacity slider. Right now it's 100%. And we start to bring that down. It should start top out about 50 something, about 50%. So round about, I give it about 50%. So that's the opacity sliders now at 50%. We've got this color. Remember, there's the old one. There's the new one. We've still got this pinkish um, hue over it. It was always going to be a problem to take this orange away. And I think just with that, but we're going to take it further than that. But just with, with that, we have eliminated most of the problem now <clears throat> let's go and see what our old friend um, the match color does for us okay we can say neutralize this photograph right and let's take a little bit of fading take it out not too much right and that's kind of got rid of some of it some of it but we can do more so there's what we have, there's what we had, 
the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take another stamp. So again, Command, <coughs> Option, Shift and E. That would be Control, Alt, Shift and E on a PC. Okay, and what we're going to do now is a real friend again, back into the camera raw filter, yeah, because there's so much, so much to this, you know, that um, it makes our job just a little bit easier. So we can start to brighten it up a bit. Whatever, whenever you expose something, always give it a bit of contrast. We can have a look at the highlights. What's the highlights like? Well, we don't want to go too crazy with them because those lights at the back there are really making this photograph, you know, uh, horrible, in my opinion. You know, but we can fix that. We can fix those lights. There's not a problem. Because the lights are not casting. They're that far away from them that the light is not casting. It's a bit of a back shadow there on this, this lady. You know, uh, maybe a bit of back shadow on this guy's head, but it's not casting uh, anything on our subjects. And that's the important thing here. So up with the clarity a bit, and let's increase the vibrance of it a little. Okay, let's have a look at the whites in this image. So we could tone them up a bit. Let's have a look at the blacks of this image. Okay, and the shadows, brighten that up a bit. So let's go and sharpen it, because again, this poor photograph has been taken um, with, a film, uh, with a film camera, and usually film camera is very sharp, but the lenses weren't great. You know, the film was fantastic, Kodak, Fuji film, etc. But the lenses on, um, if they weren't professional cameras, you know, like, Canon, Leica, Nikon, you know, um, then Hasselblad even. People were not going to sp spend in those days £3,000 for a camera. They st some of them still don't do it. So we need to enhance the sharpening a little. And we're going to do that by moving the sharpening up. Bring the radius down a bit and bring up some detail in it. We don't want to do too much with it. We can see that there is a bit of noise in the photo, just a little, so it wouldn't hurt just to take that noise out of there and again, some noise out of the colour as well. So we're now going to move on to the hue, uh, saturation and luminous, luminance sliders. Um, <clears throat> there's a kind of purplish tinge over here, so again we can tone that down it's very, very subtle. The magentas as well. Tone them down. Increase the orange a bit. Increase the red a bit. You can see that working. Yeah. And um, I wouldn't do much more to that. It's as much as you're going to get from, from this one. Um, let's go to our old friend, the vignette, and we'll pull a vignette over the top of it like that okay so if we wanted to we could get a large photograph so if we wanted to uh, that's what we had that's what we've got sorry that's not what we had <laughs> that's what we had and that's what we've got which is 10 times better if you wanted to you could go in here and you could get rid of those lights very easily I mean spot healing brush again in here and literally paint over that gone get rid of those lights you know um, you could straighten this image so we could um, we can see that it's got a bit of of a bend to it yeah so we would go in to filter and lens correction and right away without doing anything I mean if I've done that you know it's going to be fish eyed up but right away without doing anything I am literally just messing with that so um, let's go back into lens correction yeah, and right away without doing anything, it's corrected automatically. Yeah, 
So I wouldn't do anything else with that, I just hit OK. And that's what we've got. You know, that's that's the photo that we're finished with. You know, which to me looks a bit better if you see what we had and what we what we didn't have. I'm not going to save these. Um, I'm going to move on. Um, so let's look at, we've done colour casting. Yeah. So let's move on to underexposed photographs. Because they really are something that we all have. I'm just closing everything down here. Um, so next we are going to look at underexposed photographs. So let me see what we're going to do here. Right. Okay. So I'll be with you. I'll give you the screen in a minute. I'm just fixing everything up, guys. So we have got, I'll bring you the screen back. So we've got this underexposed photograph. We can bring another one in. Um, I should have let you see what I was doing here. Uh, that was going to be underexposed. We'll bring this one in as well. And that's underexposed also. So we'll work with this one. Very easy to fix an underexposed photograph. If it's got some, some um, information on it to begin with, we can see that this photograph does have plenty of information on it. So what we'll do here is we'll take another copy of it. You know, another way to take a copy, another way to, to take a copy is select the layer. And, and, and if you've got a, a locked layer, yeah, if you've got a locked layer, like a background layer, like that, all you need to do is take a copy of that layer. So you would con command J, takes a copy of the layer. You can then delete that layer. And then you need a copy to work on, so Command-J again. Yeah. So, what we're very easy to fix this now. We just, our old friend, Camera Raw Filter. And we go into the Camera Raw Filter and its exposure we're looking for. And we can tone it up. Right. And we can give it contrast. It needs that contrast. Let's look at the highlights that are in it. Sky's coming back through if I bring the highlights down. So that's a good sign. Let's look at the shadows, right? Let's brighten the shadows up a bit in this. Um, let's look at the whites of this image. They're mainly in the sky, so we can tone them down a bit. Look at the blacks in the image, and we can tone that down just a little. Then we're going to add a little bit of clarity, not too much, maybe about 25%, and a little bit of vibrance to it. Right, let's look at those shadows again. Okay. Right, and what we can do, there's no color cast in this, but um, we can go over and we can make sure that there's no haze associated to it. Look at that sky coming through now. See that, just with the dehaze. There's a bit of haze in the sky. You know, so look at the sky coming through now in the photograph and add a slight vignette, not too much. Okay, so that's what we had as an underexposed photograph and that's what we've got. Let's try and take it a step further. Let's go up to, again, these are tools, we're going to cover every one of these tools, but these are tools, in fact, you'll use some of them today. Um, we're going to have a look at our old friend Neutralize in the, from the Match Color Palette, and that's gave it a color cast so we can spruce that up a bit. I love the, um, the, the blue sky that that's given me, so I'm going to cancel it. And again, I'm going to hit Command-J, that's Control-J on a, on a PC. When I say command or option, it's control and alt on a PC. Um, so what I'm going to do here is something a little different. I'm going to go to the adjustments layer, come back down to match the color. I'm going to neutralize it again. That's brought the, brought the blues out in the sky, but it doesn't do much for the earth and the vehicle. 
but the sky is absolutely lovely so I'm going to do that right and I want the sky from this and I want the the everything else the ground from this one I want the sky from this one it's very easy to do because we just just put a, a layer mask over the top of it right so anything that we paint in this white box I think you remember that from last week anything we paint in this white box and black yeah is going to be um, right now it's going to be hidden if we paint it in black so let's hide it all let's go over to the the palette over here and let's um, click on the two arrows another easier way to do that an easier way to do that is to hit the X key yeah go back over here go up to edit fill right foreground color and it's going to fill sorry I should be in black go edit fill foreground color and it's giving us we can't see nothing there because it's giving us the the pick the layer underneath it so what I want to do is I want to use the sky from this layer right the layer above it so I get a nice big brush right and if you hit the open a uh, closed square bracket you'll get a nice big brush and we're going to paint in white so switch them over again I'm going to make sure that the brush <coughs> has no hardness on it right the flow up up at the top here the flow is down to about 80 percent and the opacity is down to about 75 percent okay so this is what we do if you look um you'll get opacity up here and you'll get flow that's for your brush okay and we're going to paint in gray over some of that sky and you can actually see it coming in and if you look at our mask I could have done it in white but if you look at our mask you just hold the alt key or the option key if you're using a Mac and um, that's our finish so we can merge that down so there was our before there's our after you know very very easy um, to do it was underexposed this one is really underexposed so again it's our old friend we've got a background layer here right if you're using CC and I think CS6 has it as well has a little padlock at the side of it but again I showed you a trick where you just make a copy of that delete that copy uh, if you're using CS5 or CS4 but um, all you need to do here in that case is hit the padlock and it'll change it into a layer and we're going to take another copy of it again you can hit command J yeah now make a copy of it so we're going to go up it's underexposed so we know what to do camera raw filter and we're going to go up here this time and we're going to throw this exposure up right just throw it up we're going to bring up the contrast right the whites we can tone down and the blacks let's look at the shadows in this there'll be some shadow and there is some f um, lens flare at the bottom let's tone the whites down further let's take the highlights tone them down let's take the clarity up and let's take the vibrance up in it okay let's tone that down a bit um let's go and sharpen this image a bit so i think it's a bit foggy as it goes out but that would be down to the lens you know so let's just a little bit of sharpening amount bring in some detail and if there's any noise reduction it doesn't hurt a little bit of luminance and a little bit of color goes a long way so we can look at the greens in this and we can say well let's tone the greens back a bit 
let's take those greens and tone them back let's um and there's a little bit of orange in it so let's decrease the orange and let's go and have a look at the d head see what that does the trees up here in the the distance will come through better because there's the haze there so we can take some of that haze out and it's clearing it up it's clearing the whole photograph up yeah just a little let's go back and let's um, play with that shadow a bit more right there's going to be some shadow there but let's play with it a bit more we don't want too much of it. Add a vignette, small that'll help us. Okay. So now it's a large photograph, that's why it's taken while. Earth. Yeah. So we need to get rid of this lens flare at the bottom. And that's where we'll use a different tool for that. We can use, if you're using CC um, 2015. I'm just ready to upgrade to 2016, but if you're using CC 2015, there is um, a content aware move tool, and it's very, very good. So we can take this here, and it is what it says, we can move it. So let's move it up to the sky, yeah? And let's shrink it in size, because we're gonna get rid of this. Okay, let's just move it out of the way. And let's hit the check mark at the top or the enter key on your keyboard and do that. So now it's disappeared down the bottom, but we're left with it up here. Yeah, so it's very easy to fix. Very, very easy to fix. Take the content aware, move tool. Grab that. Hit control, uh, hit, ent hit enter. Sorry. Let's take the patch tool. Boy, we're using them all today. Right, and we could move it over there. But another way to do it, and probably the easiest way to do it, would be to make a selection. Okay, make a selection round about it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to fill. We're going to fill it. And we're going to fill it and make it content aware. Now what that does is it looks at the pixels that are round about the fill. Round about it. And it makes sure that it's going to get that. Okay, so it's going to colour it in with the, the sky that isn't there basically. And if we hit OK, that should disappear. You can deselect that by either going up to select or deselect or hit Command V, uh, Command D, and that's Control D in a PC. So that is all I would do with that. If you thought it had a color cast on it, again, if you were doing this, it was a commission you had, it was some work you had coming in. You would take your time with it so it was the best possible um, photograph. You can go up to match color again and you can neutralize, see what it does. It's not doing anything because there's no cast in it, right? It won't hurt it. And that's that one done. So that's what we had before and here's what we had after it, okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to, you're going to love this, we're going to colour um, some vehicles, we're going to recolour them, okay, so uh, we do that, it's completely different from um, the way that we get rid of Chromecasts, etc, I can bring back this screen for you, the iMac, so we're going to get, we're going to bring in a couple of vehicles, so we're going to open and we are going to change the color on, let's see, let's change the color on that one. Um, 
okay. Let's change the color on that one and that one, okay. So bring the two of them in. So, uh, put that there. So what we've got is a red car. Uh, it's got a background, etc. Um, so we're going to recolor the car, basically. Um, we don't want to color the wheels. They should be standard issue. Um, but the car would be uh, the first place I would start with it. So to do this, once again, make that a layer. Make a copy of it. Command J. And let's go up and have a look at replace color. Okay. Let's have a look at this. Replace color. Adjustments. Replace color. Now, in fact, we will, yeah, we'll use replace color. So we have uh, various, some of these can be quite complicated. But that would allow you to take a medium shot, a medium, any, any color that was on there, any solid color. You could add to that color or you could take away from the color. Okay. You can make the, the color that you select have localized clusters, meaning that if we go over to this, we can see that it's light red here, but it's dark red down here. Yeah. So when you selected them from the, with the eyedropper tool, there's a light one that's a reflection, but it's still red, still part of the car, it's a reflection and a darker color. So that's what localized color clusters mean. The fuzziness, we'll get into that in a minute. Let's select the car. That's the first thing we'll do. So we'll select the red and we can see in this box here that we are selecting the red. I'm, I'm using, trying to use this command button. Anyway, it lets us see the car. So we can go around and we can select other parts of the car all right and if you click the plus icon we can add to the selection now it's also selecting the orange beam at the top here yeah but I don't think um, that's going to be a problem because we're going to use a mask on top of this anyway so we continue to go over the car making sure that we have everything look at this dark red at the bottom here that's part of the car so bring that in there is a little bit of red there so bring that in as well I don't know if it's part of the car but bring that it's maybe a sticker on the, wind, the window so as much as you can see that it's pure white now you know because we're getting we are getting all of the colors we've picked up a lot of the color there you know if we had to select that just now it would select all of that, all of the background as well. And that's where the fuzziness slider comes in. But we'll finish selecting what we need to select from the car. And that's where the fuzziness slider now comes into play. If we bring the fuzziness slider down, we can see that it's selecting the car. Right? I don't want it all. I don't mind having the beam in. I don't want it too far down because it's selecting less of the car but I want the car to be as white as I can get it right and I'm not bothering about the doors behind it the next problem now the next um, solution to this coloring the car is very easy this is called replace color so to replace color we just click here and let's say we want a blue car right so we can Mess around with different shades of blue. Bring that up like that. Okay. We're getting there. Let's say it was an orange car. Let's say it was a green car. You know, we could literally mess around with these hues of car. I'm going to go for a light, light blue car. Okay. So, 
we'll click that then we'll look at the saturation in here if we can make make it really bright or we can tone it down to a more turquoise a realistic color yeah the lightness is okay for this so I'm going to click OK. So that's what we had. That's what we've got. But if you notice, the beam along the top here is also blue. Well, we don't want that. Yeah. So the easy way out is to add a mask and take the orange beam from the bottom. So add a mask and then fill it with black. Okay. So we're going to fill that with black. I'm just doing it quick. You know what to do. Go up to edit, fill, and you would use your foreground color. Okay, so that's filled it with black. So now we've got the red car back, right? We've got the red car back. So to bring that car back, we'd need to mask the whole car, which we're not going to do. So let's fill that with white instead and paint with black. Right, hang on, yeah. And let's paint with black in there. So we know we've got quite a lot to paint here. So the first thing I like to do is grab the brush tool, make sure the hardness is about 80%. You could bring the size of the brush down that way if you wanted, or you can just use the open and close square brackets to bring it down. So the first thing we're going to do is we can paint that out right away. Yeah, we've got our orange back. But there's a lot more in here. If you look at the doors, yeah, I'll just undo that. If you look at the doors, redo, undo, redo. If you look at the door, so the best bet here <coughs> is to come close to the car and come right round the car, painting black. All right, and make sure that the, the opacity and the flow are up to 100%. Okay. The best bet here is to come around the car, paint around the car like that. Do not touch the bodywork. You can get the fender in. That'd be the bumper. I'm going round the fender. And don't touch the paint. Just bring the brush all the way around. Okay, I touched a wee bit there, but I'll fix that in a minute. Back up to where you began. Now I've touched a little bit here. So again, hit the X key, paint in black, and you can put that out. So if we go into the mask now, <coughs> we can see that the mask is like this. So let's grab the lasso tool and let's trace our path all the way round, <coughs> all the way round our black line that we made. All the way around. I'm sorry this is boring guys, but you know, I'm sure you'll find tons and tons of uses for this. And we want to fill what's outside of that line with black. Okay, so switch to black and go up to, because we've made a selection, go up to select and let's inverse it. Okay, so now we're, we can fill that in. So we can hit fill, it's saying content aware, we want the foreground color, and we've filled that in. Command D, let's uh, hit the Alt button, click on the mask, and it takes us back now to this. So if we look at between the two of them, you can see that only the color of the car has changed. Yeah. So again, once more, you would take a stamp, that's Command, Option, uh, Shift and E, to take a stamp of it, filter, you would always, always end with the camera filter, because it's what, camera raw filter, because it's what the people are going to see, you know, and if you can make it a bit better, you know, um, enhance it a bit, then so be it. Let's have a look at the highlights in this photograph. They could come down a little. It's a bright sunny day. 
let's uh, tone that up a bit. We can warm the day up a bit as well. Warm it just a little. We can look at the whites. And we can look at the blacks that's in the windows. And then up the clarity a bit. About 25, round about that. And um, the same with the, the vibrance. <coughs> we can go straight to our friend D. Hayes, see if there's any D. Hayes in that. There's not, not much anyway. And bring that down. Okay. So, <coughs> turn that one off. So, we had a red car, and now we've got a, a turquoise car. Turquoise, not green, turquoise. I could have used any colour, you know, to colour it. Let's do another one so that you get the hang of this. We'll make this a bit different. So we have a green car. Yeah, I think it's an old Renault. I don't know. Uruguay anyway. So we've got <coughs> a green car. Again, we are going to take a copy of it. Command J. I'll take a copy of this green car for you. So we're going to work on the copy this time. We're not going to use replace color. We're going to use selective color. Now, this is a bit trial and error because selective color is what it says. It's looking for a color in the photograph that it can select. Once it selects that color, you can start to play around with the cyan, the magenta, the yellow and the black. You've heard of CMYK. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Okay? So we don't want to affect the reds in this photograph. There's only a couple of bits, and one's up here and one's over here. We don't want to affect the reds in this photograph. We want to affect the greens. So we go to greens. Yeah, and then we literally play around with these sliders. You know, so magenta... So, like that. <coughs> so it's affecting something. Let's make it relative. Let's affect the black a bit. I don't know if that does anything. So you're really limited with this tool about what you can um, achieve with it. You know, the select to, to replace a color, I would probably use <coughs> the, the other, the replace color. I wouldn't use selective, but this has worked in some occasions. <coughs> Let's put it to yellow, see if that does anything. Okay, so it's making it yellow, see if absolute does anything, oh there you go, we've got an orange, so we're getting an orange because I'm working with other side of the spectrum, so we've got an orange, so let's um, go to the reds, because there's red and orange, so it's going to affect the reds round about. Again, the magentas of this. Okay, let's go back relative again. Make it absolute. Let's go back to the yellows again. And that is selective colour. It doesn't give you much in the way of if it was a red car, you would be getting different colours. They're afforded to the, the spectrum again. I'm sorry I don't have one to show you guys. I'll have one for next week. Um, and they're, they're afforded to that spectrum I was talking about. So, I think I'm going to keep this orange. Or yellow or something. Right, go there. Okay. So, it has changed the colour of it. <clears throat> it's probably changed the colour of some of the things out here as well. It has. So, again, you would take a mask. 
you would take a mask and you would paint in black and you would mask out those things that it had painted yeah McDonald's etc and you would come round here and you'd mask it all out again go round the car and the leaf there's a leaf it was brown and the pavement these the reds the yellows that affected them all okay so that's that's how you would you would tackle using selective color if it been a blue car <coughs> you'd get a completely different color spectrum if it had been a yellow car instead of a green car again you would get a completely different color spectrum now we've got a yellow car for instance if I um, applied that layer mask we can try it again go on uh, to selective color and we can say well I'm going to affect the yellows this time and you'll get oranges now you know they're a pink car so it depends on what colour the car was to begin with, you know. Uh, cyan, tone that down, can tone it up. Get a pinkish car. Okay. And that's um, how you go about colouring in photo Photoshop. So what we're going to do now is... We've done the underexposed photos, the, the color cast, the recolor. We're now going to do the chroma key stuff. And um, it's actually very easy to do. I'll put you back to the Mac screen. We'll close these down. We don't need them. I've got everything saved anyway. And what we're going to do now is go to... I'm sorry, sorry, chroma key, green screen. Right, so we're going to bring in this lady. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the size of this down right away because it's, um, I'm just holding the alt key there, guys, to, to do that. I can even stop holding and bring that in there like that so we've got this lady here we're going to put her on a different background as you can see <coughs> the background's green they call this chroma keying or green screen they also use blue screens you can bring in another photo uh, they use blue screens right where this lady uh, could be keyed out as well on a blue screen so for this, uh, the blue screen, she's standing in front of the blue screen, the photograph's been taken, or the video's been taken, it's a still from it. And um, you can tell it's a still because of the motion blur on her fingertips. But the background is blue, as you can see. So we can key out the background, and we can put something behind her. It's a lot easier to do this in After Effects or Premiere with um, various tools and plugins, even third-party plugins. But it can be done very, very easily in Photoshop. Now, this is great for things like if you've got a green cloth. We'll do Tracy in a minute, but let's go back to, I think her name's Amanda or Miranda. Anyway, the what we can do, we could put a product there. Yeah, on a green table, we could have a green table with a green cloth on it, with a green background, everything green, put the product on it. As long as the product doesn't have any green in it, take the photograph bring it in here okay um, and then we can key it out so how do we key it out well once again we do exactly the same setup as we've always done we um we are going to first of all make that a layer and then take a copy of it we always work on a copy of the original image because if you mess it up and then You've got auto save on and it saves it off and you try to backtrack and you're looking at your backup so always take a copy of it you know you can have as many copies as you want you could keep going here you could have as many copies as you want um but we only need one for this so how do we do this then well what i like to do is put a 
layer be, um, between them and then I'll get some blue colour and I'll just fill it with blue. So there's a blue layer sitting behind her, like that, right? So how do we do this? We go up and this time we are going to use select and we're going to say colour range. So what's colour range? Colour range is going to do what, not so much selective colour done, but what replace colour done. It's going to take a load of colours that are available within the spectrum that is localised to the clusters around where you pick with the eyedropper. Now that might sound complicated, but it's exactly the same as replace colour. We take a colour like that, and then we can add to the colour because not this is a good green screen, but most green screens are light at the top and they're darker at the bottom because the light's hitting them. So you would take a, a load of different colours from this, yeah, and then you would go to the fuzziness slider. So you could say localize colour clusters, right, and then you could go to the fuzziness slider and you can tone it up. You can see that as I go to the end. I'm picking colours that's in her. We don't want that. We want her to be as black as we can get her. Okay. Like that. And okay. So now it's selected, this this lady, all the way around her hair, everything. And it's keyed out the background. So the next step to this is to hold the Option key down or the Alt key. Go down to the the add layer mask that's down the bottom here add layer mask tool okay and hold the option key down and click it so now it's keyed out Miranda remember that was Miranda now it's keyed out Miranda now we can see our blue behind us okay so if we go in and just ha have a closer look here we can see a little red tinge going right round, a little green tinge going right round about the model. So what I like to do is take a copy, take a, in fact, um, right click and just apply the layer mask. Not going to, not going to use it again. And I'm going to take, I'm going to hold the command button down. Remember that She's transparent, everyone's transparent. She's got a green tinge around about her. And um, before we do that, actually, before we do that, we are <clears throat> going to go into this mask and we're going to have a look at it. Now, if we look at this mask carefully, we can see that, yeah, it's not pure white. It has to be pure white. It's just a little bit grey. Easy to fix, swap the colours, grab our brush, up the size of the brush and start painting. Don't go over the edges, just start painting everything inside here. Right, and again, don't go over the brushes, uh, the edges. Remember, the hardness is set to about 80%, right, and you can choose the size of brush that you want using the bracket keys. And we're going to just go over everything here making sure that she is solid white we don't want shades of grey or anything like that you know animation software does a far better job than what I'm trying to do here but it just shows you that for products etc we can do that now we have some black out here so we want to get we want to paint that black so again you can swap the colors Right, and you can go in here and paint that black right up to her head. Okay, that's got to be black. Everything there's got to be black. And we paint round it. We're doing well. Don't touch her head. We're going to refine the edge just in a minute. And I'll get rid of the green cast. Very easy. Once you start doing it, you can do a photo in, you know, minutes. I'm just taking my time because I'm guessing a lot, you know. 
Uh, go back to white, lower the size of the brush, go around here, make sure that that's painted, and then everything is white. That's good. So hit the Alt key, or the Option key if you're using a Mac, and we're back to that. <clears throat> so let's apply the layer mask now. Apply the layer mask, and let's select. We'll make a selection of her by holding the Controller Command key down and clicking on the layer. So we made a selection of her. If we, you should have Refine Mask up here if you're using anything less than CC 2015. But with CC 2015.5, they changed the selection to Select and Mask. So I can go into Selection, Select and Mask, and there's a, a bit down the bottom that says Decontaminate Colors. I don't need to bother about anything else. She's well selected, but Decontaminate Colors. Just turn that on, right? And when we save it off now, we can get rid of the layer below it because that was our original layer. And we've got this perfect layer on top of it. Now we can have some fun with it because we can bring in a background. Let's open a background here. Uh, backgrounds, I've got an abstract here. Let's bring in the background. An easy way to get that in is just to uh, drag it. Just drag it right in there. Hold the shift key. And that positions it right in the middle. So we can turn that up again, hold the shift key, and it'll turn it up 90 uh, degrees. Okay, so if we hit the command and minus key, we can come out a bit. And we can bring it up there, like that, and just a little bit. We don't want to bring this up too much, like that. We want to hold the shift, I'm holding the shift key when I'm pulling here, so that the circles are circles and not ellipses, so we'll do that. So we've got the girl there. So we can get rid of that layer, we don't need it. Yeah. And um, we can turn that off. We can go up to image, let's trim. Let's trim the image, what do we want to trim? We want to trim any transparent pixels that are out there, okay? So trim it, it's trimmed it there. Not made, made a very good job at that side. That's okay. Because we can bring the crop tool. Probably because I'm hanging on to the original and we can bring that crop tool in like that. So, well, she looks okay, but she doesn't look as though she's part of that image. I'm going to apply this layer mask. She looks fine, but she doesn't look as though she's part of that image. She's not got the colors, etc. So up to her old friend. Up here, adjustments. This time we're going <clears> to <throat> match the colour. And we're going to use this a different way this time. It's going to ask us, what colour do you want me to match it with? The source is going to be that background. Okay? So it darkens up the girl. So now we can hit neutralise and we can bring that into the middle a bit. So now she is having some of the colors from the background in her face and everything. We can tone down the intensity. We can speed it up. We can tone it up a bit, tone it down. Um, so now she's she looks as though she belongs. But she looks flat. Yeah, she looks flat. All I'm doing there, guys, is just hitting Command-0. She looks flat. So we want to make sure that she's part of this image. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to this image. I'm going to go filter, camera raw filter. I'm not going to enhance this in any way. I'm just going to put a vignette over it. The vignette is going to come down like that. And I'm going to do that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer below her. So select her layer, hold the command button down and click new, the new layer button. And I'll put a layer below her. With that layer below or selected, I'm going to call it shadow. Okay. And we'll call that model. On the shadow layer, I'm going to hold the command button or the control on a PC and I'm going to click on the model. I am then going to select black as my fill color. I 
I've got this selection, I'm on the shadow layer, and I'm going to fill it. Fill with the foreground colour. Okay, so now, if I deselect that, I just hit Command D there, but you could go up here and hit uh, deselect. Same thing, Command D. Um, if we look, we've got this shadow. Yeah, so let's go and enhance this shadow a bit and go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, and let's see the edges of it. That's fine. So I've blurred the shadow. Let's bring our model back. Let's select the shadow and click one of these uh, nodes up here. Right click inside the shadow and click the store. Grab the middle node and push it over. Yeah. Grab the bottom node and just push it over just a little. She should be offset about it. That's fine because the light will offset the shadow. So what we're going to do now is just uh, confirm that transform. And all we need to do is take the opacity slider. Yeah. And take the opacity slider down for that shadow. So we can just see it. And it's there. Right. Now we can go up to the top. Um, sorry. Uh, didn't mean to just hit Command, Option, Shift and E for um, a new uh, stamp. We've got this new stamp here at the top of the layer. Right. And what we're going to do is we are going to try something different. We're not going to go to the uh, camera raw fill. We're going to try something different here. I'm going to create a layer above her. I'm going to fill it with white. Okay. Fill the layer with white. I'm then going to select all using Command A. That's Control A on a PC. Or you want it to select all. I'm then going to go to um, Modify. I'm going to go Contract. That's going to bring the selection in by 18 pixels, say about 18 pixels, round about that. Okay, let's make it more than that. So, modify, contract, let's make it 25 pixels, so that'll do us. So I've got 25 pixels. I am then, I'm on this layer 4, I'm then going to hit the delete key. Delete. So I've got this white going round about it. Hit Command and D to deselect. So, what I can do now is, this you're going to love this, but what I can do now is put a layer between them. In fact, what you could do is hit the backspace key and then hit Command J. Right? So now that you've got that, this is the, this is the complicated way to do it. You can turn that one off. You can hit the command button and click on the top layer. Then hit the delete key, command D. Move the top layer between the border and the model. Okay, turn it on. Then go to effects, right, and inner shadow. Now the inner shadow should be 100% no global light, no distance to it, and throw the size right up. Okay? So that's what we're left with. We've got an inner shadow there, and we've got a border. So if we go up here and change that to multiply, we now have this shadow going all around the model. That's another way to do a vignette. Okay? And again, we can take another stamp. I'll tell you again. Command Alt, uh, Command Option Shift and E. We can take another stamp. Uh, we don't need that, that, um, that. That's it. So we've done we've done that one, right? So that's that went from that went from there. Went from there to there. Okay, let's use the green screen. Let's try Tracy very quickly. So, again, 
taking your layer. I'm going to speed through this now because of, I was wanting to do something with that George Formby uh, photo I've got. So I'm going to go up here, select. I'm going to go color range. I'm going to click in here. And I'm going to click over here. We're getting different plus tool and click and add different shades of this. Right, look at the fuzziness slider, tone that up a little, hit OK, right, and I am going to, sorry, I'm going to hold the Alt key down and do that. So if I tone that off, she's in black, I can grab the background, throw it over, hold the Shift key down, background's there. Put it below Tracy. Hit Command Zero so I can see the whole of the background. Hold the Alt key and hold the Shift key down and bring it in. Like that. Right, and we can crop everything out. Cropping out destroys, I've got it set to delete cropped pixels. Delete them. And it will make your image smaller as well. So we can crop that out. Um, we can go and take a stamp very quickly. Go up to filter, our old friend again. Let's start here. Let's make it a bit warmer. Um, exposure, but bring up the, that. A clarity and vibrance. Right, let's go and make sure she's sharp. There is a lot of noise in there, so bring that up and add a little bit of colour. Let's go to the effects panel and add a vignette. Okay, let's do that, we've added the vignette. Let's take this, hit D, hit X, Alt and Backspace to fill it. Right, let's select all. Let's select Modify and Contract by 25 pixels. Hit the delete key. Okay, Command D, job done. That's how quick it can it can be. That was literally I think two minutes. I'm looking at the clock here. I think it was two minutes. You know, so that's how quick you can take it. Um, if we another stamp here just now, um, we can turn these ones off, and that's how quick you can go from that to that. You know, so. It, to do it to begin with, you you would take your time with it, etc. You know, um, so if there's anybody in YouTube, let me see if there's any, I know there's, I know there's a lot. Hi guys, Ahmed, okay, hi, what is our project? Okay, Ahmed, if, um, our project is Photoshop, mate. We're taking Photoshop and we're going to use it to, we can't use it anymore. We're going to do everything with it. I hope you can understand my accent. Okay, so... Let's get George sorted, yeah? So this is what I want to get into. We'll have a look and see what we've got. I've got these saved off anyway. Let's get George sorted. So we can open this up. We can say color George, where is he? Images. Okay. There he is. Okay, so I've got this image of George. I was digging through some stuff and, and seeing this image. I said, wow, I said, that's, that'd be good to colour that, you know, and, and um, you know, really make it half decent. So what have we got left, guys? We've got uh, about 40 minutes. I'll have a drink of something. There's no alcohol in it. Um, <laughs> I've got about 40 minutes. Um, so, if you've got any questions, you can throw them up. I'll just type something. Uh, okay. There you go. Right. So, let's go on with George. Um, we're going to get rid of the background. Okay. So we can select George out of here. There's a few ways to do it. Once again, we know the rules. 
we always start and we take a new layer. Always start with a, with a new layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and tweak the brightness and the contrast of this layer because I'm just looking for a selection. You could even grab another layer if you wanted, you know. I'm just going to, I'm looking for a selection. So um, I'm going to go to the adjustment layers and uh, I'm going to go down and see that I'm still working okay. Yeah, everything's fine. It's going through. Right, that's fine. Okay. Right, so um, I've got the brightness and adjustment. So I'm going to use the legacy format for brightness and adjustment. It just, I think I get better results with it. And I'm going to bring the brightness down and the contrast up. Just a little, just so I can select George. Okay, any other selections to do? Probably go around the heart with the, the tool, the pen tool, etc. Okay, that's all I need there. I'm going to merge that down. So that's all we have done to it is that. We've just gave it a little bit of contrast. Another way we can do it is to go to channels. And because this is it's, um, grayscale, we need to be working in RGB. So don't merge them. And we can go to channels now and we can look at various channels and see if there's a channel there that best suits our needs and I don't think there is because um, it was grayscale to begin with. Anyway, here we go. Let's grab the quick selection tool and let's go up here like that. Right, so it's grabbing quite a lot of it that we don't want. Right, and we'll hold the Alt key and we'll try and get as much of this as we can. Right. So hold the Alt key again, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Right, and use. Right. Okay, we can get rid of that little bit in there. I think that's not bad. Grab that. Ah. Uh -huh. Right, so we've got quite a lot of them selected. We don't need that bit. Right, quite a lot of them selected there. So we're going to create a, a mask. Right, of George. That's fine, that will do for our purposes. If you were to do, if I was to do this for a client, it would be uh, the pen tool and it would be literally going in here and using the pen tool and coming up and going right round because it's such an old blurry image. Blurry. <laughs> blurry I said um, and we can go right round but I'm not going to do that I've got a half decent mask at the moment and that's what you would do and you would come down and you would then make a selection of that okay that's what you would do there right so we'd, we'd make a selection we'd chop that out but we're not going to do that I've got a selection here It'll do for my purposes, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to apply that layer mask. That will do just now. I'm not bothering if it's, there's bits missing and what have you. Um, I'm going to open uh, from this. I know it's in here because I gave it to the guy. Skin tones, skin tones template and open it up. Right. So... All I want is that, this whole group, and I'm going to throw that right in there. Sorry, do that again, Steve. And I'm going to throw it right in there, okay? So I'm going to go along here, and I'm going to make sure that they're all filled with black. These are the colours I'm going to use to colour George's skin. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that these are all 
filled with black. So I'm just going to go up, take one at a time. I'm, all, I'm hitting Alt and Backspace. And I'm just going up and filling them all in. These are the colours that will give us George's skin tones. So we definitely need them. Right. Very quickly. Let's take the first one. We're going to paint in white in here. Okay. And we're going to do his face. I've not cleaned the photograph up, took spots from it or anything like that. Right. So we're going to do his, his face. Let's turn off those two layers you can see. That's fine. Um, let's go back into that layer first of all. And let's clean it up just a little bit. I'm speeding up here guys because I'll finish at 9 o'clock and I don't want to leave you on the, the hop. Okay, just bring that round there. It's looking okay. George looks good even if the backdrop doesn't. <laughs> he looks fantastic. Hope you can hear me okay, Peter. Can you hear me okay, Ahmed? Are you there? Right, that'll do. Um, so, we're on his face here, so I can bring those two back on just for reference. It doesn't matter. But um, we're going to cover all the skin with this. Right, so we want to paint in white. I'm over here. I'm painting in white. I'm going to use this brush. Okay. This time, I'm going to bring that up to about 10%. Okay, the opacity and the flow are both going to be at 100%. And I'm going to paint with that red. Okay, so if you think I'm painting in here, right? I'm going to paint all around there. I'm going to turn soft light off for a moment and just put it to normal. Right? Just put that to normal going to get a smaller brush and it's as easy as going round here I'm using quite a soft brush although there's a little bit of hardness in it not much found that 10% works good so does uh, 15 anything over that seems to bleed too much into the surrounding um, areas so I'll go up and round like that that's a little bit of his ear up and round underneath his heart job done so round his eyes right so every cut every um, layer in this palette is at soft light there is one layer I think at um, overlay so the blend modes right now I've got set at normal but the blend modes for it so I go over everything with this right and an easy way to do it is to go in here you see me doing this Peter go in here and grab all the way around here Right, don't worry, we'll get more of it. Backspace and go back around, get the rest of it. Okay. And Alt and Backspace. Command D. Hold the Alt key, click on that, he's got a red face. Let's um, put it back to soft light and let's tone it down just a little bit. You know, to roughly 12% or something, 10, 12, 13%. So this one here, it's the cheeks, nose and ears. So again, paint with white, the cheeks, the nose and the ears. Right, the cheeks, 
let's get round the other side cheeks the nose and ears not bother about his other ear right and tone that down okay you'll see this colour coming through in a minute next one's the lips and the mouth okay put his lipstick on there you go George you're looking good and bring that through there and again tone it down 10% 12 12 is good could even put it up a bit just a little okay next one's parts not so tanned right so the parts not so tanned are under here right um, round here a bit in there maybe and a bit underneath the eyes if people look ill they start to look ill round about the eyes and what have you so parts not so tanned tone it down to about 10% maybe give it a little bit more I reckon yeah shadows, supple uh, stubble and eye sockets right so shadows well I've never ever seen George with a 5 o'clock shadow but we've got to put it in because it exists within and it's all in the shadows so right down there his neck it will be up in here so put it up it's in the shadows uh, that's a shadow there um, so we're going to have a stubble eye sockets so we're going to have it right round there and round there um, I'm sure there's some in here right so where there's a shadow and again tone it down we don't want it to look like Coco the Clown and the cheeks again that could be toned down just a bit right so all skin minus the lips so this is easy all we do is delete that layer mask and then grab this layer mask holding the alt key pull it up drop it in there so we've got all skin minus the lips right so we need to paint with some black in here so paint with some black minus the lips and it's round there like that and round there like that so that's good um, that's that's done right so uh, go back to white and creases the nose tip and inner and outer whatever earlobes okay creases the nose right so we're going to go in here any creases he's got gets this colour and we need to paint in white Steve I was wondering why it wasn't going in so much better with a tablet tablet's hooked up I wanted to do everything in um, up with a mouse because you guys will be using mouth in and out of here so that will be going in there right and I think there's a little crease up there so again tone it down right here are the fatty parts going in now the fatty parts so I have a fatty part there a fatty part there I'll give them some in the chin as well why don't we right and we just tone that down again around to about 12 percent is good all skin covered and use a tone chart right so again what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete that one delete that layer mask and I'm going to take this one here holding the alt key 
I'm going to pull it up to that one there right and then I'm going to go in to the color and I'm going to start tweaking it now I can bring in a color mask if I really wanted to That'll do because we're toning it down a bit. Okay, so let's do his hat way over here. And to do the hat's quite easy. We just create um, a new solid color layer. And we hit OK. In fact, let's make it nice and bright. And that's going to be filled with black. And then we can go around here and paint in, in white with a brush. And we can go really low with this all the way around. Again, when I'm not speaking, uh, it's a bit quicker. It's a bit faster. We're doing okay. We're doing all right for time. And it'll come up here. I'll go around here. I'll come right up here. Now remember, there's a little bit. It's a soft brush, but there's a little bit of hardness on it. And you really need the hardness on, on these brushes. Okay. So we'll go up and round and then what we'll do is click the hit the option key and we'll go in with our old friend the lasso tool and we will just enhance this. Well I've not got his shirt and tie and everything to do so the coat should be quite quick. And the hands they're they're all set up already so Right, I can see in the other monitor here, like um, what you're seeing, and I'm about I think 30 seconds. Um, I'm in front 30 seconds, you're seeing it 30 seconds later. Uh, so that's fine. So we can hit the option key again, bring that back, change that to uh, soft light, it's got a red hat on bring this up and let's um, choose maybe a color I've got up here let's choose this let's bring that down like that that would be more like it okay let's look at his coat right I'm going to be quick with this coat there's the ute probably not get round to that but we're going to get quick with this coat I reckon so let's do his coat. That was his hat. Okay. Let's do his coat. Same thing again. Let's choose a solid colour. Let's make it any colour we want. And let's fill that with black. Right. So he's got that hat on. Let's do his coat. Let's tone that colour down, I think. It's getting a bit late. So, um, hit the B key and get in there. We're going to paint in white. You can see me changing everything here. I'll try and get a piece of software that shows you the, the keys that I'm using. You know, that comes up on the screen. I think there's something you can get for the Mac. Right, so, come around here. You don't want these to be hard selections. You want these to be soft selections because they're going to take on whatever backdrop you're having to colour in and they're going to take that on. So down with the size of this, bring that round here, round here like that.
right, we can even go inside there with that. The black will not matter. And I can't see how many's looking, how many's watching. I need to go to another page, but anyway. We can continue around with this like that. Take your time. I'm not taking my time, mate. I'm, but you would take your time with it, guys. And round his thumb. Catch his coat again. Round the yuke. Underneath the yuke. Round his hand. His fingers. There's a piece of software for this. I think it was Arcvis that, that do it. And I was sent a, from the company, I was sent a trial thingy of it, but didn't really like it. I preferred, I preferred mine. It, the colours didn't, well, they didn't look right, you know, so I preferred um, me doing it, doing it this way. I was colouring in a photograph, so round the button. Click once there. Come over to the other end, click once there, sorry, and then click once there, that's it. Come over to the other end, hold the shift key down, click once there. Right, and it's up the other side. I won't be long, guys, I'll colour this in and put it in the background and get away. Um, next week we're going to be doing... Um, product, everything for a shop, everything you need to know for a shop. It's going to be um, taking the photograph, how to take the photograph, how to make a cheap light tent, you know, have a diagram for you, um, how to make a cheap light tent, how to light it with um, elements that you have in the house already, how to take the photograph, how to take the photograph into Photoshop, tidy it up, make sure that um, everything's okay with it, that it's nice and clear, that the people can see it, and how to um, resize it, how, what size does it need to be, the thumbnail, etc. So let's um, go in here and start to color this up. So start here, I reckon. And we will pull that over there like that. Once we get started, we're all, we're, once we get started with this, it's, it's okay, guys. So I'll be saying, Steve, I'm bored, silly. You know, but I did say that I wanted to hold the shift key down if you're ever doing this, and just that adds to the selection. Right? If uh, you were ever... You now know how to recolor images and and what have you. Very easy. And Photoshop. When people open Photoshop for the first time, they close it back down again. Come back to me and say, Steve, yeah, that's a nightmare. You know, and it's really easy, guys. So you'll get the hang of it. I think Peter's well up on it. If you're listening, Peter, I'll see you in a few days. next week, well the week after next back down to Blackpool for a a long weekend of jolly old fun and the GFS have a new backdrop as well that Caroline and I have been formatting, if you're there Caroline, hello sweetheart um, I'm just going to fill this in at the moment in case we 
have a mishap we need to go back round it okay let's get round here so I've been going to the gym wow after about 20 years I finally get round to getting on a diet and um, going to the gym which is completely different I'll just fill that in which is completely different from when I used to go to a gym it was a boxing bag set of skipping ropes and a long run now it's all different completely different with all those machines which is good you know it's good I'm feeling better I think that's the object of the exercise is to feel better come on D see it can be done quite quick and hold the option key and now we have that turn it to soft light and let's bring them up here and oh dear oh dear so um we can go and find something that would suit George you know better I'm going to do the hands I won't have enough time to do the let's do that I think it would be a kind of blue but there wouldn't be much that's more like it yeah that's 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 more like it Steve yep that's good so we'll do the hands very quickly and we can use what we've got here um, so I'm going to zoom in here we can use what we've got back to the the brush again uh, tone it down a bit and let's just put that up to 100% so they can see what I'm doing right and it's going to be round here forget the fingernail just now round here like that round here round his hands and then we'll put him in another backdrop add a shadow and we are done with this episode uh, time flies when you're having fun fellas but we've learnt a lot to, well you've learnt a lot tonight um, which is good because um, if there's because if you're sitting there wondering what one tool does, you're trying to work it out, and it's, you know, I have a lot more to show you. I've been using this since since version 2. That was the early 90s. And um, somebody introduced me to it. I was at university. I was studying um, computer programming, etc., and sitting calculus exams and what have you. And somebody showed me this gear. And I've been hooked ever since, and I've my discipline as a software engineer, but I've made a lot of money with graphic art, a lot of money with it. Um, and that's why I don't find it overly expensive. It can be expensive for certain people, you know. It, it can be expensive, but let's just tone that back down again. Sorry. I can't talk and work. Like being on that treadmill, I can't talk and run, you know. So, um, what we're going to do is back in here with the brush and just give it a little bit of that. You don't need to pay much attention to the hands anyway, but I should have went in there and done that. I've been very quick here, guys. I think you know that. I've spent the last 15 minutes doing this. And we'll come round this thumb. There. I won't get the uke done. But. You know how to do it. And we'll just fill that in. Very easy. Right. Okay, that'll do. 
sloppy, but it's there. So what we're going to do is parts not so tanned, lips and mouth, parts not so tanned, um, shadows, all skin, so minus the lips. So, yeah, let's get rid of that one. Delete the layer mask. Take this one and pull it up to that one. Okay, I think that'll do. I've got that one there, so let's delete that one. Grab this one, hold the Alt key down, pull it up to that one. Okay, so that will do. Is let's get the backdrop doing. Let's get the backdrop done. Right, so let's take George out of there now. So we've got this. Where's our backdrop file? Recent this that will do fine let's take this throw it in there like that let's come down a bit keep the orange at the top and the blue at the bottom i think let's do that that's fine let's drop them drop that below george once we're finished resizing it Okay, drop that below George. <laughs> right. And what we'll do now is we'll put a black layer below that and we'll tone this down a bit like that. And we've not done his teeth, we've not done his eyes, we've not done the uke. God. Um, what we'll do now is we'll put a shadow behind George so I'm looking at where the shadows are in his face so it should be at the back of him the shadows so at the back of to his left yeah so that would be that grab that do that what I'm doing is um, command uh, command backspace to use the background color because the background color, the foreground color is white, background color is black. So we're going to go up to filter, we're going to go to blur, Gaussian blur. Okay, we're just going to go to the edge of it to see it. That's okay. We're going to hit okay. And you can hear the dog. What we're going to do now is right click the start we're going to move it back that way and move it back that way a tad and up a tad like that okay and then we can tone it down a bit so that there is a shadow there of George we can then um, go up to the top and make a stamp you know how to do that now guys go to filter camera raw filter and let's tidy this up a bit of contrast etc tone that down clarity do that with the vibrance tone that down a bit straight into effects add a vignette okay and then something that I like to do is add a gradient map over the top of it and the gradient map will be an orange and purple and bring in the orange to meet the highlights and the purples to meet the shadows that's fine then we'll change that gradient map to overlay right and we will tone down the gradient map so it's very subtle we'll then grab another stamp Put a new layer on that, fill it with white, select all, select, modify, contract by 25 pixels, hit delete, command D, and we are done. Okay, so I can get rid of that all the way down to 
to there. I can hit delete. So we took George and we done that with him. Okay, we've literally got three minutes left, guys. Uh, next week it's all going to be about products, um, how to take the photograph, etc. How to um, enhance the photograph so that it looks appealing to um, the people that are going to buy it. And um, until then. Uh, let's see if there's any questions. So there's only three three minutes left. All right. No, everybody's ex experts. That's good. You know, everybody's experts. That's fine. That's great. I hope you've learned something else. Um, it's available uh, on um, YouTube, so you can watch it anytime. Um, the last about two hours, and I think in a Friday, it's, it's, I can only do it in a Friday. If we can do something, we'll be moving on from Photoshop, we'll be moving into Illustrator. And we'll be showing you how to work with Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, and then, we'll, of course, we'll be moving, we'll be using Photoshop, Illustrator, and After Effects to do some um, really cool things like. Um, these lower thirds, etc. I'll bring them up on the screen. These lower thirds, etc. That animate on um, some really cool things with them, you know. So um, I'm really looking forward to next week. But I'm looking forward to Blackpool, Peter. If you can hear me, you know. I don't have a list of uh, the people that are are, uh, are on. I can see. I can see there is like I've got thirty two or something, looking at it, something like that, 32 people, anyway, um, until next week, uh, tune in, I'll try and get something up on Facebook, um, before we do it, a couple of days before it, so that you know exactly uh, what's going on, it says 157.39, uh, so I've actually got a couple of minutes left, it doesn't matter, though, you know, I can, I can end it just now, um, so I'll get something up on Facebook guys that lets you know uh, exactly what's coming up see if you've got any preparation what I'll do is I'll get these files up as well to Mediafire or something give you the link for that so you can download them and you can try them yourself uh, it's not too hard I'm, I've seen a load of stuff that the guys have done it's, it's just inspiration seems to be the hardest uh, part it's, it's what you want to do until someone, you know, rings and says, Steve, um, can you do this for me because my father's in it and his face is half covered by a balloon and, you know, can you can you, can you you fix, can you build the other side of his face? And you go, yeah, yeah. So I've done all that, you know. Um, or people for magazines or books they're writing, can you enhance these photographs? Could you colour this from black and white to colour? Can you do this? Can you do that? Uh, leaflets, letterheads... You know, it's unbelievable, you know, the amount of work. Um, anyway, until next week, fellas, I'm signing off and happy photoshopping. Bye-bye.